What's up guys, this is Tyler here with Savvy Hut Tutorials and welcome to another wonderful Music Monday. Today I've got a great tutorial. This time, as promised, I will be talking about the synth once again. This time more of a chord synth that plays sort of like a violin soft in the background. Goes great with a lot of techno, uh, electronic house music during the soft parts of the song. So. Without going too much further into it, I will go ahead and play the final product and then obviously go through and explain exactly how to build it. Alright, let me go ahead and click play. Alright guys, without further ado, let's get this tutorial started. As always, the first thing we will do is go up to File and New. Start with a completely blank project. Next we will go up and make sure our sequencer is showing and that's here in the top corner of your FL Studio screen. Left click on that and you'll see the sequencer added the kick, clap, hat and snare as usual. The next thing we want to add is go up to Channels, left click. Go down to where he says add one, scroll on over until you see 3x OSC on the list there. Left click on that and you'll see it adds it directly to our sequence here below the other four instruments. What we will do in 3x OSC is modify this a bit. Here's what it sounds like just standard as soon as you add it. So I'll hit Q on my keyboard and we're going to change that up a bit. So the first thing we'll do is go into each of these oscillators and change them to the sawtooth shape. So left click on each of these. Now you can hit Q on your keyboard and see how much that changed the sound. From here we'll go into each oscillator and also modify just a bit more. So I'll drag my oscillator to course up to zero. So I'll make that zero semitones. Again, in the upper left hand corner here you can see exactly which semitone you're on. Of course it's blank now, but once you hover over it, left click and drag it, you'll see I've got currently set to zero semitones. Next I'll go down here to oscillator three and bring my course up to about negative 12 semitones. So now that I've got each of my courses set up, I'll go to my fine section here in oscillator one, and I'll bring that down to about negative 20 cents. So right about there. And then I'll go down to my oscillator two and fine tune that. We'll bring that up to about 17 cents. The next thing I want to do is change my keyboard pitch here. This doesn't really affect everything but if you have a small keyboard it will help you to hit the right notes that I'm going to use in this tutorial so right now it's set to C5 you can see here on my screen what I want to do is just go over to where it says C6 and I'll right click on that so now you see the C6 has changed if you hit Q it'll be a much deeper sound so I'll go back to C5 that's just going to help me hit the range that I'm looking for on my keyboard since I don't have a full laid out piano in front of me. The final thing I want to do with this is go up to my oscillator one and change the stereo detune just a little bit to positive 10 cents. So let's hit Q on our keyboard. That's just going to add a little bit of depth to what we're doing. The next thing I'll do is go to my insert section and go to my volume. From here I want to drag the attack up just a bit so we'll crank that to right about the center here and next I'll go to my sustain level and left click hold it down and drag it all the way across drag it all the way up and that'll bring it to the far right so it turns the knob completely clockwise as far as it can possibly go the next thing I'll do is increase the release just a bit so I'll drag that there so let's hit Q on our keyboard we'll see how that affected it so far Perfect. The next thing I'll do is go to my cut section, so left click on that, and all I will do is drive the attack back just a bit, so I'll left click on this and drag it back just a tiny bit here. Okay, perfect. So when you first went into the cut section, your line may have looked a bit different. All you have to do is mess with the knobs down here and adjust it to where it provides a very similar shape to, to what I've got going on, and you will get the same effect. So I'll hit Q on my keyboard. Alright, perfect. The next thing I want to do is go to my FX tag, 
up here in the upper right hand corner of my 3x OSC instrument and I will just scroll up to the first free space available which is going to be five because the snare hat clap and kick would have taken up the first four FX channels by default that's just what FL Studio does so make sure you're on FX channel 5 and I'll double click on that here you'll see it opens up the mixer and we are on insert 5 in the mixer the only effect I will add to this is fruity chorus so if you left click on the down arrow here make sure you're over select and we'll go up to fruity chorus left click on that and you'll see here we've got fruity chorus now applied to our instrument we can hear what that sounds like by hitting Q it's just going to add more of a choir type of sound or a bunch of different instruments playing at the same time effect, basically. Or a chorus, you know. So in order to get the same sound that I had at the beginning of this tutorial, all I did was go to my preset section here, left click to that drop down, go to presets, and I use the light HF. Feel free to experiment and see what you like best, but this I found to be the desired sound. So I'll left click on that and to apply it, you'll see it just made the changes automatically so we don't have to dive in here and get very, very specific. Feel free to do that if you want to adjust and play around, that's a good way to learn. So I'll hit Q just to hear what that sounds like. And all I'm doing to get those different notes is hitting different keys on my keyboard. So Q, T, W, just hearing what it will sound like. The next thing we want to do is right click on our 3x OSC instrument in our sequencer and go to the piano roll. I'll zoom out here and I'll quickly add the notes that I had for this tutorial. So there we go. Now I'll just hit spacebar to play my pattern that I've got selected right now. All right, perfect. So in order to add this to my playlist, I'll go up to my playlist here. So where it says view playlist, it's now blinking. I'll left click on that and make sure my pattern one is selected. So you can tell up here which pattern is selected that you'll be pasting. And I will go over with my brush tool selected and just left click. You'll see it added the pattern that I just created and the instruments and everything like that. The next thing I did was change the tempo down. You see it's at 130 right now. I'll just scroll down to where it is down to 100 beats per minute. So right there, and that's gonna apply it to the full project. And the final thing I did was just add a very simple beat, and I'll add that to my playlist under track two. So make sure you have pattern two selected. Left click, drag that in. One final thing, if you want to adjust the smoothness of how the synth sounds, all you do is go in the filter section here and adjust it. So I'll click play and adjust it here. And there you have it. That's a very basic way to create a chorus synth. I'll probably create a more detailed one later down the road, but I wanted to kind of lay the groundwork here and explain how to create a very basic one. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. As I've been saying, I put a combination of those comments and questions to create the next tutorial. So next week though, for now, I've got it set up to where I'll create a new lead synth, kind of that ARP high intensity sound that usually leads a lot of fast paced electronic techno whatever kind of music so look forward to that that'll be next monday so every monday i'm doing fl studio tutorials and every friday i am doing photoshop tutorials and a lot of artists out there like to create album cover art so i'm trying to help people do that as well so if you learned something from this video please give it a like that really does help and definitely subscribe to stay in tune with the latest FL Studio tutorials. All right, guys, thanks for checking in. Bye. I'm going to show you exactly what we'll be creating in the end and quickly go through create it, explain what I'm doing, and how you can create the same effect. All right, here it goes.